Today we have Associate Professor Eng Yong Ui from the Program in Emerging Infectious Diseases here at Duke NUS Graduate Medical School in Singapore. Emerging Infectious Diseases Program is one of the five signature research programs here in Duke NUS. Uh, Duke NUS, as you know, may know, uh, was set up uh, several years ago uh, with the idea that we want to train clinicians um, who will be able to do more than just see patients but be able to bring some of the signs and advanced medicine. So in, the re in that regard, uh, we, the training consists not only of um, you know, clinical medicine but also in the MD programs, they spend a year uh, on research so that we can le they, uh, the students can learn and have actual experience with the research. We have also added on top of that um, a PhD program called Integrated Biology and Medicine so that we, again, as the name suggests, is to integrate biological science with clinical medicine so that again, the idea is to translate the scientific knowledge into medical practice. And so the Emerging Infectious Diseases program is one of these five programs and that's what we aim to do to, to understand you know, infections or certain viruses and viral uh, diseases so that we can make a difference uh, in the people who may have such infections. My research work here in, uh, uh, in this program is primarily focused on dengue. Uh, dengue is, uh, um, if you don't, do not already know, is a virus that's transmitted by mosquitoes and it's, common, uh, it's a very common disease throughout the tropical world. Um, it's, I mean, we know of this disease for many, many years. In fact, the epidemic dengue hemorrhagic fever started almost, what, 50 over years ago. But up to today, we do not have a vaccine for this virus, nor do we have a drug to treat this infection. So, so what are my, my laboratory is very interested to do is to try and understand why some people get more sick than, or, or sicker than others when they're infected with the same dengue virus. So not everyone gets you know, the dengue fever or the severe form of disease called dengue hemorrhagic fever. Most of the time, people don't even realize they've been infected with dengue. So, you know, so there's a, um, it's, it'll be important for us to understand why some people get very sick while others don't get sick at all. Uh, and if we can understand that, we might be able to come up with better treatments and uh, better ways of uh, dealing with, with dengue. Medicine, as, as you can appreciate, is the very basis of it is our scientific knowledge of disease. Uh, without that, there is no modern medicine. In fact, that's, if you look at history, that's what happened. Um, diseases uh, existed for as long as there were human beings. Uh, and so we've been, we, people have been falling sick for a long time. And certainly because you're sick, you know, there were a, you know, professional people who tried to help uh, at times of sickness. Uh, but because you know, back in the, uh, you know, two cent greater, more than two centuries ago, we don't have a good understanding of diseases. So, and, and a lot of these were guesswork. Like for example, people thought that the, the state of health or disease is a balance of bodily fluids called humors. And so one of the popular treatments for disease was bloodletting or to, to, to dr withdraw considerable quantities of blood. And so, as you can imagine, you know, that could actually make a person even more sick than, than what the disease was actually causing them. Um, and even up to a point where, you know, uh, in the uh, 18th and 19th century, when, when diagnosis and, you know, the cause of disease became more better understood, um, bloodletting remained quite a common uh, treatment because there weren't many other options. You, so you could diagnose disease, you probably would know, yeah, there's some you know, um, uh, pathological basis to this, but there, were no, there, was, there wasn't anything you could do. And so, but with the advance of science, then we began to un understand how to best treat this disease. So we, we came up with drugs, we came up with antibiotics, anti-cancer drugs, and a whole range of drugs that now begin to give doctors some things that they can do for patients who are sick. The improvement of our understanding of science has improved medicine. But having said that, there's still a, lot, a, a limited uh, number of things that you know, we can do. Like for example, we cannot cure cancer, or most cancers. We, even if, though we can diagnose Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, we can't re re reverse the disease process. Likewise with the, the disease I'm interested in, like dengue. So we can diagnose dengue, but there's very little we can do other than support the patients. So, in reality, even today, there remains a lot of opportunities, a lot of room for us to improve how we deal with patients and how we can make them benefit from the science. And so that's 
uh, one of the reasons why Singapore wanted to set up a school like Duke and US to, to really bridge this gap between science and medicine, to be able to bring the, the, the knowledge in science and drive it through to medical practice, but also to bring insights from medicine back into science to say, well, here's an area that we do not fully understand and this is an area that we really desperately need research on. Uh, and so, you know, that's the kind of people we want to train as the kind of people we want to have in, in, in Singapore. Um, so, so that's the, why there, there's such a strong emphasis of research uh, in Duke and US. So a lot of research uh, uh, throughout the world uh, do not happen uh, solely in the laboratories. Uh, there is a lot of collaboration, there's a lot of partnerships. So for example, my lab, uh, we collaborate with uh, our, our colleagues in um, ASTAR institutes like uh, Singapore Immunology Network, uh, Genome Institute of Singapore, the Experimental Therapeutics Centre. We collaborate with uh, our colleagues in the Yongdu Lin School of Medicine. Uh, with uh, colleagues in the hospital like Singapore General Hospital and Tan Tok Seng Hospital uh, as well as uh, colleagues who are overseas uh, and not, it's not just myself but likewise those my other uh, colleagues here in Duke and US also collaborate with partners throughout the world and that's the, only, you know, of, that's the best way of getting things done because you cannot have all the expertise within one group of people or one laboratory and so instead of learning new things all over again, it's best to just collaborate with someone who is really proficient or an expert in that field, and then you can really move the field forward much faster than if you were to try to do this yourself. So the kind of people we're looking for uh, to do a PhD program, we those who are really passionate about science and who are interested uh, to, to uh, bring that science and in, so that, it'll be, that knowledge will benefit someone, uh, patients, med or in particular the practice of medicine. So if you, if, if you think that you, you are that kind of person who will like the science but also want to have, make sure that that piece of knowledge that you will generate will benefit someone, then that's the kind of people we will be looking for. Mm -hmm.